Howdy folks, how we doing? It is I, King Boomer. <clears throat> this is going to be part two of the Mortimerian Tales, which is Bob Mortar, Mortimer on Would I Lie to You. Um, this is part two of part one. The, the part one is a long video, it's about 50 minutes. I did a video yesterday where I did the first half of it and um, give my input on whether I think he's lying or not. And um, I was right on three out of the four, so I'm betting 750, so I think that's pretty good. But <clears throat> this is part two, so if you haven't seen my reaction to the first half of this particular video, I'll put the link in the description below, and that way if you haven't checked out the first part, you can hop on that before you watch this one. <clears throat> but I think this is a lot of fun. This is probably my favorite show, British show, that I've encountered on this journey. Um, because it's, <clears throat> hello, because it's, uh, I, f I feel invested in every story that's told. So, let's check it out. Let's see how goofy Bob Mortimer's stories get this time around. And here we go. For five days, I pushed my cat around in a pram because it had sprained three of its ankles. <laughs> David's team. Okay, the two key questions. Okay. I think he's telling the truth because in the video before, I found out that he has a cat. He might have multiple cats. So this seems plausible to me so far, but let's see how this pans out with the panel. He's here. How did it sprain three of its ankles, and why was it necessary for it to be so mobile during its recovery period? Okay, I'll address those. One of my children, my eldest boy, um, didn't throw a tire at it, but threw a, a tire, a car tire, yeah. and it hit the cat. He threw the tire recreationally, and, like, <laughs> and the cat got in the way. How did one ankle survive? <laughs> Luckily, he was scratching his head at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the tire. Oh, that was a good one for way back. Seventy-five percent of the cat's ankles. That was are, a good comeback. Did you say sprained? Well, they were bruised. And we were told that he mustn't walk. So he was told he mustn't walk, but but he but he needed still to travel. Of course he did. Yeah. It was my younger boy's buggy we put him in. So right. Because you could strap him in. You could strap the cat into the buggy. Yeah. How did you strap the cat into the buggy? Using the straps and <laughs> the only journey he had to make was to the litter tray. <laughs> so we just used to take him from the front room round to the litter tray. Tip strap him in. in. Strap him in. Tip him in. Why didn't you just carry him? Mm. <laughs> no. Because he had his bandages round his legs, but he would insist on trying to walk, which we knew would make his ankles worse. You and couldn't stop off. him walking, but you, he would consent to be strapped into a buggy. It's not really a, it's not, when it comes to pets, it's not, not really a matter of consent, David. Never <laughs> use the phrase, when it comes to pets, it's not a matter of consent. You can get into all sorts of problems. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Tell us more about this cat. What was its name? Its name was Good Monson. It was a... Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what? Never ask Bob the name of anything. Nobody killed me on that. We learned nothing. His name's Good Monson. Good Monson. Good Monson. Good Monson Good. as in the word monsoon no, with Monson. an O missing. <laughs> yes. Right. Good Monson. His name's Good Monson. He's a tabby oriental. Why, why Good Monson? Why, why, why? My, yeah, my youngest son named him Good Monson. All right, right, David, what are you thinking? What do you... Th oh, my God. L Lee Mack is killing me on this, his reactions to the stories. But Bob Mortimer is one strange human being, I gotta say. He's really, I love the dude, though. I think, yeah. well, he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's telling the truth. Yep, lying. You think he's a... Well, this is a superb moment. <laughs> uh, unanimity from the team. So, let's say... Shame it's, it's a lie. We'll say I think it's, it's a truth. Lie. Bob Goodmonson, truth or lie? I am telling... <laughs> A lot. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay, I'm gonna start marking these down. So let's get this out. Okay, win loss. So three tick marks for wins, two for losses. Okay. Man, I was like 100% confident that was true. Guess not. As a teenager, I used to terrorize my neighborhood with a game I invented called Theft and Shrubbery. 
What were the rules of theft and shrubbery? Can I first of all say my memories of this are a bit sketchy? <laughs> Always handy for this game. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an, an, an older gentleman. They're more like just, you know, just fingerprints on an abandoned handrail. <laughs> <laughs> Even while you poetically describe the ageing process, another part of your brain is inventing the rules of a fiction. <laughs> And shrubbery. Yeah. It's a game that I played in my youth, in my teens, in um, on the Lakes Estate in Middlesbrough. I would probably be 14 or 15. Um, I hope that's all the information you need. <laughs> no, it's not. This game involved. Yes, of course. Of course. In which case, I'm satisfied and there's no <laughs> need to talk. <tell. laughs> what, what were the rules? Um, there would have to be a gang of you. I would usually be with um, Stabber and Bagger. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't realise you knew hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> Neil that was a, a Jerry Dungaree's son. Because he <laughs> <laughs> didn't take his father's name. <laughs> hated him. Yeah. Hated him. So, and, but, and, and Gary Cheeseman would be there. So the reason he was called Cheesy is because his mum used to give him cheese. Do you know the cheese slice? Yeah. yeah. To take out with him yeah. when we were hanging around the shops what? and that. Because she wanted. Because she thought it was good for spots. <laughs> Surely it's because of his surname Cheeseman. No, no. <laughs> Oh my god, this guy is so strange. Part of it. You know, Gary Cheeseman was a big lad, yeah? A very big head. A sniper's dream, they used to call him. <laughs> oh, he's such a nice... The thing is, he's such a nice lad. And he was a... He was a... <laughs> we love these points in the show where we say, Bob, let, let's all gather around the fireside. <laughs> Tales of your youth. <laughs> <laughs> so the rules of the game. Of theft course you not. Theft the rules of the game. Okay. Theft and shrubbery. 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 <laughs> They're relatively simple. You had to creep into the back of someone's house and observe the family watching the telly or whatever they're doing, yeah? It's getting a bit sinister now, Bob. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is, this, is this at night? This is on the evening time, yeah. So, so the, the, the family is, as it were, backlit by the yes, domestic lighting. It, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd find one where the curtains were open, yeah? Go to the rear of the garden and then you'd slowly walk towards the window, <laughs> right? Try not to disturb them and you'd chant, increasingly increasing the, vo the uh, volume as you went, we do beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> but we are in this is absurd. Yeah, I, I'm like 50-50 on whether or not this is true or not. The one thing that's making me think about this is like if somebody tried this in, here in the States, it would not be a good... It, it, it would not be a good idea. Especially since, um, you know, um, there's a lot of parts in the uh, United States where the, uh, the owners of those homes would have firearms. So they immediately they, they would... You know, it's just, it's, that's all I'm going to say about that. It, it just, it's not a good idea at all to do that here. But it, in terms of him telling the truth or not, I'm like 50-50, I don't know. In your garden. <laughs> we do beg your pardon. <laughs> but we are in your garden. Gradually get closer and closer to the window, and as soon as you were seen, that's when shrubbery comes in. Which was what? You were not allowed to escape via the front of the property. You had to go across all the fences. Because you're teenage, what you're really waiting for is someone to make a noise or give yourself away, yeah. so that you all have to go run, run through all the gardens. That's the shrubbery that's part. That's the shrubbery What's part. What's the theft there? part? The, the theft is... is we just always felt that we were stealing something from them. Their I don't privacy. Know, their privacy, their dignity. <laughs> just casually. So you, you're going up the garden saying louder and louder, we do beg your pardon, <laughs> we are in your garden. <laughs> <laughs> we do beg your pardon, we are we're in, in your garden. You're shouting. Oh, oh, loud, oh, loud, oh, loud, oh, loud, people who are hard of hearing, <laughs> you could be like, we do beg your pardon, we are in your garden. Before they notice it. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. How long lasted? I'm imagining very long before people kind of rumbled you and... No, it was just one of the games, you know, you, that we did. It could be um, theft and shrubbery night. There was another night where we used to take fruit from um, a fruit vendor's wagon and throw that up in the air and just let it drop on our heads. <laughs> Quite a lot, <laughs> oh my god! Next time, next time, don't use melons. What is wrong with this man? Cheeseman was very good at it. <laughs> so, what do you think, David? Steve, my, what do you my, think? my concern is. <clears throat> I'm still 50 50 on it. I'm. I'm gonna say true. I'm gonna say true. Because it sounds like something weird that he would do. So, I'm thinking it's true. I'm not too confident in it, but I'm going to go with true. Okay, let's see what the panel thinks. The details are so utterly believable and sound like they're real, but if it wasn't actually a game, he spent an awful lot of time looking through people's windows. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming down on the, on the side of the truth. Yeah, I know it sounds odd, but I just believe it. <laughs> so you're going to say true? Yeah. Okay, so, theft and shrubbery, Bob, truth or lie? I was telling... The truth. Hey. Okay. Uh, this is I got lucky on that one. That's a victory. Score is now four, King Boomer, two, Bob Mortimer. Okay, let's continue. What is going on here? Michael, I once punched him in the face because I thought he was a ghost. <laughs> Bob, how do you know Michael? This is Michael, and after cutting his hair, I got a job on a campsite as a hairdresser. <laughs> and finally, Lee, what's your relationship with Michael? This is Michael. Together, we helped free a donkey that had trapped itself in the cubicle of a seaside toilet. <laughs> Bob, you cut Michael's hair, and this was on a, on a campsite? Yeah. How did you come to... Because you're not a hairdresser, are you? I'm a hairdresser, David. <laughs> You previously worked as a hairdresser, had you? I'm from a family. I'm the youngest of four boys. And in my family tradition is this, that the eldest is a priest, then a lawyer, <laughs> then a teacher, and then a hairdresser. So, <laughs> so it fell to me to take up the scissors. I was given my first set of scissors when I was 13. I actually had a pair of scissors when I was younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the fourth child? Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. It was more for the, you know, cutting out bits of coloured. Oh no, these were quite, no, these were Japanese steels. These were Yasakis. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> so you, you were given these hairdressing scissors at the age of fourteen. Yes. Had you undergone any further training, or just were encouraged to experiment? Well, here's the rub, because Michael, or Mickey, you know, Mickey the drink, he's. <laughs> Is he giving him a nickname? Why is he called Mickey the Drink? <laughs> anyway, so, he was one of the first people that I ever gave a haircut to, as a young boy, as one of my friends. And then, fast forward to 1982, I go to the World Cup in Spain. There was Michael, um, Billy the Pigeon. <laughs> Jack, okay. You know what? Because of that, he said the Japanese scissors, which is uh, specific, and then he gave uh, Mick, Mickey the drink that nickname. I'm leaning towards true. I think it's like I'm like eighty percent confident it's 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 true now. But we'll see. Let's let's see how it goes from here. Billy the pigeon. Why is he called Billy the pigeon? Oh, he's found his way out. No, he's a pigeon. <laughs> Oh, this yeah. is so much fun. He had like a fat chest. We all went to Spain. We were on the campsite for the England fans. I, as always, gave um, Mickey's haircut. And the one-man army from Nottingham, the Nottingham Forest fan, yeah. caused all the trouble out there. He demanded that he had a haircut. What trouble did he cause out there? Well, he, for example, he, he rushed to the cafe that we're in and threw a coin like that. <laughs> <laughs> could have damaged anyone. Luckily, it went straight in the slot machine and won the jackpot. What? Get out of here. I'm just going on here. It was really rather simple story. So I cut Mickey's head. I'd done since he was 13. 
he, he, he cut his hair regularly. He first did when he was 13. When he's 13, one of the his, first people he was a regular hairdresser. No, that would be a lie, but I would always cut Mickey's hair. Yeah. I was seen doing this, and before you knew it, over the course <laughs> he of the like next he's 10 about days, to die laughing. I probably did 50 to 60 haircuts. <laughs> and were you paid for these haircuts? I probably was, but in kind. Right. Oh, because. No. Uh, <laughs> The only thing any of these English fans could say was Wave or Solo, and that got you an egg sandwich. And I seem to remember that people, because I was cutting hair, it was always in the morning, that someone would bring me, oh, mate, you're busy cutting hair, you have a Wave or Solo. So, so you paid in egg sandwiches? I think maybe I was. And you did 50 haircuts over, what, how many days? I think it was probably eight days. So you're, you're getting, having 50 egg sandwiches over eight days? <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in the haircuts themselves. Yeah. Was there a signature style? It was the early 80s. Were there mullets going on? I mean, what was the look? It was a, fe it was a feathered look. I was expert. It was That's true. That's I'm a good from. question. It's called the Foffa. You'll probably think of it, probably think of it like, like Rod Stewart. Oh, it's a lovely look. Uh, Layered at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Do you still cut hair now? Oh, not so much now, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I, I can't, I can't <laughs> do the new cuts. What? Did I, you hear that? I can't do I the can't new cuts. <laughs> we need it on. Okay, I'm still gonna go with true. It, it kind of wavered a little bit for me, but I still think it's it's more true than false. So I'm gonna go with true. Mickey the drink. I love that. So David's team is Michael, Diane's ghostly guy, Bob's campsite client, or Lee's donkey do-gooder. Well. What do you think? See, I first, when I heard Diane's story, I thought that was a lie. And then I heard Bob's story, <laughs> and, uh, Lee's story, and then suddenly Diane's story seems a little yeah. bit more real. Um, I think it's Bob. I think giving your man a haircut is the truth. 50 oh. haircuts in a week paid in egg sandwiches. <laughs> so I, I don't know that you can do that hairstyle with one pair of scissors. I'm from a family of hairdressers, and I just don't think you can do oh my Rod Stewart. Oh, family of hairdressers. Of scissors, Did so. you have more than one pair of scissors with no, you? No, my response to that, Nadia, is a family of not very good hairdressers. Oh. <laughs> Did you have two sets of scissors? He looks round about Bob's age. And Bob's haircut. Yeah. <laughs> can I just say one <laughs> final chance? He looks to me like a man who hangs round gentlemen's toilets. <laughs> Going with Diane. Yeah. Going with Diane. Going we're settling. We're settling. Yeah. David's Diane. team are saying yeah. that it is Diane. Michael, would you please confirm your true identity? Uh, my name is Michael, and Bob gave me a haircut on a cancer. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. We can actually see photographic evidence of Bob cutting Michael's hair. There they are. Wow, wow look at that. It happened. Thank you very much, Michael. I got Santa Harry get on too. Okay, another victory. Uh, I gotta say, this is uh, this is uh, this is some of the most fun I've ever had doing a, a reaction video. This is uh, I'm glad you guys told me to go back and do the, uh, the Bob Mortimer in the compilation of tales that he told because this is uh, this is like one of the top five most fun I've ever had doing a reaction video. I gotta say. And um, it's it's a real pleasure. But anyway, let's get on to the next one. I have a didgeridoo suspended from a tree in my back garden so that when the wind blows in a particular direction, it pops soothing sounds of the outback into my bedroom window. <laughs> uh, David, it, it pops. Hold on, say that one more time. I have a didgeridoo suspended from a tree in my back garden so that when the wind blows in a particular direction, it pops soothing sounds of the outback into my bedroom window. Uh, David, it, it pops soothing sounds of the outback. Right. Yes. What a, what a poetic way of putting it. Thank you. I um, agree. genuinely believe that that particular instrument makes a pop. <laughs> How would you describe it, Greg? Mm. <laughs> oh, it's the guy from, uh, I just watched him on Inbetweeners. That's cool. 
God, it's it's another thing. Good thing about these reaction videos to uh, all the stuff from the UK and other parts of the English speaking world is like you start seeing people you recognize and all this stuff now, and it's like, oh, it's him, it's her, it's him. It's uh, it gets me excited now, which I find uh, pretty great. <laughs> Oh, this is crazy. Oh, and how soon do you feel? Brad, stop popping. I get this every night in my house, please. Where is it, Bob? It's in a tree. Yeah. And you oh, made a conscious decision to put it in the tree. Yeah. I thought you said it was hanging, hanging from in the tree. tree. What it is, is it's trapped in a, a V. I was like, is there a name for that area of a tree? Is it called the Clooney it's, or something? It's, it's called it's Clooney. Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> it's Clooney. It's Clooney. It's Clooney. George Clooney's <laughs> older than Dick Jury do with a tree in his garden. <laughs> Why don't you believe this? What? <laughs> this part of your finger there is called the Clooney. Is it? So I'm assuming. I never knew That's that. why I said Clo I know right. the Clooney. Where, where, where it, and it's wedged there. It's wedged in the tree's V. Yes. It's <laughs> wedged, wedged horizontally in the tree's V, facing southeast, which is the prevailing wind where I live. Where do you live? Not Britain. Britain. No, what? the prevailing wind in Britain is southwesterly. It doesn't happen every night. Right. <laughs> So tell us what this sound does for you then. You're lying in bed at night and you, you, you've had a lovely day, you're just settling down and you hear. And then what, How is that what, what, soothing? What to you? I'm soothed. How? Because the mind is soothed. You know, you get things that do, will do the same thing to, say, your throat. Yes. That does it to the mind. What if your brain's fine? You don't want to hear that every time it's windy. You're always soothing your brain. That's what sleep is. Don't hence like hence the success of the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say though, Bob, I've been led to believe by uh, out of work hippies mm. over the years that the didgeridoo is an incredibly difficult instrument to play. Yeah. And yet it would appear that all one has to do is to pass air through it. <laughs> no, well, you have to position it correctly, just as you would have to over your mouth. I've done that by utilising the Clooney. <laughs> the tree. You're but using the Clooney in the tree as human lips. Even to any kind of noise that I did redo, the Clooney, which doesn't exist, on Bob's tree, um, <laughs> would have to be flashlight because the uh, Aboriginal yeah, doesn't that's just go. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not just wind; they use their lips. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> just coming up this time of year, I admit it's a lot better. In fact, it, <clears throat> I have a wisteria that grows through the. <laughs> Wisteria comes into leaf. Yeah. Not only does it pipe the wind towards yeah. the didgeridoo, but it acts as the lips. It's long been said that <laughs> if the wind blows in the right direction through wisteria, it can play any instrument in the world. It's <laughs> time to decide, David. Okay, we need to make a guess. What do you say? Um, I think it's a lie. I, I I'm going to say it's a lie. Or, or just on the fact that. Um, well, not fact, it's opinion, but I think it would be a vast majority opinion that that noise, or whatever, you know, that thing does, that outback sound that's iconic, who would want to listen to that every night before they go to sleep? It just, I mean, I can't wrap my head around how anybody would want to listen to that. That would, I would not be able to sleep at all. And I think a lot of people would not be able to sleep at all if that was going on. So based on that, I'm going to say it's a lie. Although I'm scared it's going to be true because Bob's such a weird creature, man. But I'm saying a lie. Of course it's a lie. We think it's a lie. We think it's a lie. Well, uh, Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. I that would have been, that even for Bob, that would have been too much. Mark me down for six. Six wins, two losses. Okay. How much more we got here? It looks like we got, there's like about eight and a half minutes left, so there's probably two more stories in here, so let's get into it. I recently had to charm a spider out of my shoe by tooting a flute at it. <laughs> David's team. <Steve. laughs> um, so, where, where were you? I was at home. So is this spider a normal British domestic spider? Yes. How, how big was it, Bob? It was, it's black, 
but it's not working. And what colour was it? <laughs> So it's not the ones that have got a little body and big long legs. Mm. No, sorry, it wasn't the type with a with a small body and long legs. Yeah, no. What type was it? it was well, you can wear the rest out yourself, surely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big big body, small legs. Yeah. Was this a gerbil? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a if bird. It was a gerbil, I'd have used a loot. <laughs> Oh god, I almost died. Oh, that was the worst moment ever to catch a drink out of the water bottle. Oh my god. Oh, now I just had to clean it up too. Well, that's going to make it into the video, folks. Holy crap. Oh. Oh my god. That caught me way off guard. I would have used the loot. <laughs> okay. Was this a gerbil? <laughs> no, that's a if bird. If you're a gerbil, I'd have used the loot. <laughs> Honestly. Oh my god. It's actually just a very everyday situation. My wife doesn't like um, spiders. Very scared of them. It's kind of my job to get rid of spiders. I don't like them either. I'm not going to use my hands or whatever. No, you Can you mime the, the blow moment? Don't fall for this. Sorry? He <laughs> <laughs> gets me with this every week. Don't fall for it. I've got just a thing for you if you haven't got a flute. Close your eyes. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. Did you blow it into the shoe? Yes, because I blew down the flute to bring it out into the heel area. These were a kind of snakeskin elastic slipper yeah. I brought up just under the windowsill above where the cat litter is yeah. I put them there because I wanted to get that height and it didn't so come you out you I moved, it. The, yes, you moved I, the slipper with the spider in it I moved it facing the cupboard where I keep the plates <laughs> there's got, I can't, I mean, it's got little holes in it <laughs> and the spider emerged so the spider emerged but didn't leave the shoe or slipper no didn't leave Did the, the slipper didn't no, leave the slipper just, I had a look around <laughs> So you were no better off, were Great you? Great imitation. Well, I didn't feel like I was better off, but I, I, at least I'd um, found out that we owned a flute as a family. <laughs> if I was scared of spiders, I wouldn't go anywhere near that slipper. I'd just leave it. I would just I'm not I'm, that scared. I, I'm, I'm, are you not? Scared I'm not of one to gin ten? I'm ginger about them. Okay. Yeah. Ginger? Is that right? Is that a word? It is, yeah, That's yeah. a word. Yeah. It is a word, yeah. It's just the correct word in that yeah, situation. It's like you, you pick something up gingerly. gingerly. It's not, it doesn't just mean the flavour ginger. <laughs> a ginger nut is not just a biscuit. It could be a tentative testicle. <laughs> Do you now know who the flute belongs to? Yes, of course. Oh my god. Your son, is he a flautist? I'm loving no. this, man. We hoped he would be, but he could never find the flute. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, what I'm confused by is. I think he's telling the truth uh, based on my fear of spiders, too. I, don't, I, I do not like spiders at all. Um, in fact, a little insider information on me and the queen, she actually wants to get a tarantula, a pet tarantula. And, um, you know, I didn't really, I haven't really protested. We're still thinking about it, but she wants, like, my approval, and it's it's not really an approval. I'm just saying, like, you know, it's, it's your responsibility for this tarantula because, you know, I don't want to touch the thing. Um, especially if you have these tarantulas, oh my god, dude, they're freaking huge and terrifying. Um, but I don't touch spiders at all, and this seems plausible to me in a way, so I'm going to go with it's true. Is that if you fear spiders, I do, and you believe that there's a spider in this shoe, I think you would be afraid to move the shoe. Yes. Not at all. I also think you would have worried about as you go to take the breath to blow it, you accidentally breathe in. Yes! Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought I, of that too. I don't have to breathe in to breathe out. 
Darn. That's a loss, so I got six wins, three losses. Okay, so this is the tenth and final one. Hopefully I can end it on a win. Here we go. I can break an apple in half with my bare hands. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> what is your technique? I take it in the hands. Yes. <laughs> so you're absolutely <laughs> bare at this point. Of course they're bare. Yes. Friction's very much part of this, um, this equation. <laughs> you must pull it... Um, I'm going to say east to west. A lot of people think you need to twist. You don't need to twist. You don't need to twist. Yeah. You, you just don't need to pull twist. apart. Pull it apart. How do you get the pull grip? the apple apart? Won't your hands just slide away from it? I just thought you'd need to twist. Mm. If you twist, you fail. Twisting equals tears. So you just grip the apple in your hands <laughs> and then fling them apart, and you have two half apples. No, I rip it apart. Yeah. The way you were miming it then, there's like downward pressure from the thumbs, almost as if you're trying to open it like a book. Yes. Yeah. Is, that, is that what it's like? Because I, I can believe that more than the just grip, bang! Yes. <laughs> no, David, that's fair enough. Yes, it's a serious. You're almost like. You insert... <laughs> oh, but I so wish it was bang. It's yeah. not. No, you're inserting <laughs> the thumbs to yeah. try and pull it apart no, that way. No insertion. All right. No, Should but, the, but that's downward the pressure. Grip. Downward pressure. And there it is. <laughs> so where are the thumbs? Are the thumbs either there side of the stalk? You know where the thumbs are, baby. <laughs> where, where are the, th are the thumbs either side of the stalk? Yes. No insertion or penetration. <laughs> just, no, absolutely but, not. No, the, the, the thumbs are used for gripping, not for ripping. That's what I was yeah. talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and if you remember that... <laughs> if you can yeah. remember that, you too will be parting apples. <laughs> you too will How be parting apples. I have done it for a long time. What I used to do to entertain was I used to take hard boiled eggs, peel them, I'd still do it, and I could take the shell off in one. And you, you actually peel the membrane rather than trying to. Don't be all rough handed and don't, you, you know, take your time. Off it's going to die. And when did you, you do it? That's the correct way to present. <laughs> With an apple, it's this. Yeah. When, did you, <laughs> when did you first discover that you, that you could do the apple? How did it come about? How did it come to be? I can't remember the first time I did it. Can't I can remember, remember the feeling. <laughs> I what was the feeling? The feeling was magnificent. <laughs> right, uh, David, um, is that is that the truth? I I think he's telling the truth. I'm going to go with it's true. Be, uh, the only reason, not because of anything that he said, but because of how animated he was when he said it. He got, like, really lit up and excited that he, you know, he claims he can do this. So... It was a good selling point for me, so I think it's true. Let's see. I don't think so, but it could be. Can mm. we leave it at that? Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. Okay, on to the next round. Um, no, we can't. I agree with that. I'd love to see him do I hope it's true, because then they'll make him do it. Yeah. But I'd love to see it. Yeah. If it's not true... I agree, yeah. Make well, him do it anyway. Try. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it going to be? Oh, I really want it to be true, but it isn't true, I don't think. You can't pull an apple apart, can you? You can't just rip it in half. I so, I so want you to be able to. If you and I can't, sure. And I can't. I can't. I've never tried. Have you ever no, tried? If yeah, I have an apple good. here, oh, I can have yes, a But I goes. think if those two can't do it, David, with the most respect, respect. <laughs> it's highly unlikely you're going to pull it off. Tremendously, frighteningly strong hands, as I found out to my own cost. <laughs> So, right. so you think it's a lie? Then? I'm afraid I do. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll go with the giant. You're going to say it's a lie. <laughs> All right, you're saying it's a lie. Bob, were you telling the truth, 
or were you telling a lie? I was telling the truth. Oh. Oh. Yes. Well, well, guess what I've got under the desk? My trusty box of apples. It's an apple in a box. It's a proper apple. Ready, yes. Bob? It's a big one. Thank you. And then mark it down as a ran seven to three. Not you, not you, him. Does your husband play cricket? <laughs> That sort of thing. <laughs> 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 Wait, that's what I'm doing. I really hope he can't do it. <laughs> yeah! Oh, look at that! Wow, that was awesome. That was awesome. Oh, God. Those, uh, those two reaction videos uh, with the Mortimerian Tales, I gotta say, they might have been the most fun I've ever had doing a reaction video on this channel. Um, so the final tally, I got seven right and three wrong. Um, but after watching the complete part one of uh, the Mortimerian Tales, Bob Mortimer is one strange human being, I gotta say. But he seems like a joy to be around. <coughs> and, you know, who doesn't love those stories? They're fantastic. So that was that was a hell of a lot of fun. Um, and I noticed that up in the right-hand corner of the recommended videos, there is a part two, which is not as long, so maybe I'll do that one eventually. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I certainly did. So... I definitely want to do another one like this. So maybe maybe not right away, but I'll get to the part two eventually down the road. And um, Bob Mortimer, ladies and gentlemen, great guy. Um, would I lie to you? It's probably my, I've said it before, it's probably my favorite uh, British show that I've encountered um, from the suggestions that you guys give me. So thank you so much. And um, they got their own channel, so go ahead, hop on over there, subscribe to them too. All right, you guys, like, subscribe, do whatever you want. I'm King Boomer. I hope you guys had fun. I certainly did. And you guys have a wonderful day, and stay safe out there. Peace out.